What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called, I stole it, but only on Mondays, so I volunteer for a driving service locally. Few hours per week, I drive the elderly to the doctors and to the shops and such. That took me a ridiculous amount of tries to say, right? My only response, no, no, like seriously, try it. <laughs> My only responsibility is to bring them from A to B and back. But as it is often very frail, weak or small people, I go in the shop with them and help them get stuff off the shelves and such. Oh my God. Because I want to. It's a small community. A number of people know me in the area. This is fine. Well, I drive on Mondays only. This happened last Saturday when I went to the shops to do my own shopping. A lady I'd not seen before, not the typical Karen look, she looked like a normal woman in her mid-50s, visibly stared at me as I walked past her. I think nothing of this. People are weird sometimes. I go about my shopping. She follows me. I know this because I do a pretty unusual tour through the aisles since I know what I need and where. Near the register, we have walked past at least three uniformed shop employees by now, she just jams her card in front of mine, blocking the way. Excuse me, since you're obviously free, why haven't you offered to help me? I stare for a good 15 seconds because I don't know what I could possibly help her with. That she thinks I work there doesn't even occur to me. I've never worked a day of retail in my life. I'm a journalist, not even close to what she's after. With my shopping? If you need help, I suggest an employee. But you are free. I don't work here. Obviously not. This startled me. I didn't expect her to agree with me. <laughs> then why would I help you? You work for local service. No, I'm self employed. I volunteer there on Mondays. Then help me already. By now, other people have started peeking into our aisle, her shrill voice having alerted others. I can see one of the shopkeepers debate whether or not to step in. Sadly, no. It's not Monday. If it was Monday, I still wouldn't help you because it's a members only service. You're not a member. And if you were, I still wouldn't help you because my only responsibility is driving people around. I help sometimes because I want to, and I certainly don't want to help you. Well, I don't care. Okay, then neither do I. I give her car to push and walk past with mine to the register, start unloading my stuff. The cashier is already giving her and me the side eye because she can see this isn't over. If you don't work here, how are you going to pay for that? You are going to pay, right? This startled both me and the shopkeeper. It's so dumb, I'm literally speechless for half a minute. Apparently, this shop is the only way to earn money now? I don't even know. No, I figured I was just going to rob this store, to be honest. It is Saturday, after all. You're so rude. I pay pay for my stuff. She's still following me, having abandoned her card in the aisle. I stay near the counter to pack my groceries while she hovers around me still. You understand I'm not going to help you at all, ever, right? I'll get you fired. I'm self-employed. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to fire me. I managed to make it out the door, put my cart back, and carry my stuff to my car. I almost think I ditched her when she appears again. Next to me, yeah, in my ear. That's not your car! I have a small seat. Nothing fancy, but I own it outright. By now, honestly, I was just having a laugh at this uh, woman. Then why do my keys unlock the door? I've seen your car. I mean, we're standing in front of it. No, your real car, the Volkswagen. It dawns on me what she means. The local service has two brand spanking new giant seven-seater electric cars, completely covered with stickers, ads, and so on for the driver service. Cars are white, stickers orange and green, very distinct. Distinct. It's tacky as football, but the cars are great for people with limited movement because they're big. How anyone could think a car with all those ads belongs to a random person is beyond me, to be honest. That's not mine. This is. I just drive it sometimes. That's illegal! It's not? Have a great day. Uh, by the way, the store has probably put your stuff back by now. She ignores this completely as I get into the car, lowering the window so as 
as to not tempt her to open the door or something. How did you get this car? No, I'm a fairly small woman. Just over five feet, very friendly face, generally quite approachable, but with a loud voice when I try. I tried. I freaking stole it, obviously! Murdered the owner as well! Keep yapping and I'll show you where they're buried! With that, I throw the car in gear, absolutely stomp the pedal to the ground and race to the other end of the parking lot. I see her frantically scramble to what I assume to be her car, but by the time she's in it, I pulled into traffic and pretty much out of her sight. Just for fun, I parked a little down the road from my place, next to another identical seat, same model, same color, very similar license plates, just in case she comes looking. Sadly, she didn't. I didn't see her or her car again. I was actually a little nervous that I'd get in trouble with the police or something for yelling that in case she reported me or something, but it seems she's not that crazy. First of all, OP is a nice person for volunteering like that. And Karen, well, I, I don't know what the hell's wrong with her. Alright, this story's called, Nice try, Karen, but you're not my mother. My original post got taken down for some reason by the mod, so I'm reposting it. Because, one, it's a good story to share. Two, there's nothing wrong with it, and it's posted according to the rules. Three, I would like the mods to explain, if they do take it down again, what I did wrong so I can avoid the same mistake in the future. So in my first post on this Reddit, your name's not Karen? Not my problem. I gave some excess background, but that's because I have a lot more stories, not even limited to this Reddit. I decided to share another one. Where this story takes place is actually the only motel room access from exterior of building my parents have managed thus far. It's pretty old and a lot of things have to be manually done or switched on or off. So it was a Friday and early evening. I was heading down to the opposite side of the hotel to turn on the exterior lights, the electronic sign, parking lot lights, etc. This motel didn't have all the doors with electronic locks, so the door I had to get through was actual lock and key. So I'm walking down past all the rooms when a door behind me opens. I keep walking, barely throwing a glance over my shoulder. I eventually make it towards the end and am just about to pull out the key when I hear rapid footsteps. I turn around, stopping another wild Karen in her tracks. Alright, she didn't really look like a Karen, but I had been in the lobby when she checked in, and yeah, no doubt about it. For a second, she actually hesitates to talk, almost fooling me into thinking, oh, great spaghetti monster, was I wrong about her? Ha! Nope! Karen begins to berate me for not being behind the desk and getting her food. What the hell? It's a motel. Where does she think she is? La expensive hotel? I tell her in a mocking way, since I honestly gave zero loves about what she thought. Oh, sure. Let me just... I can't snap. There we go. Snap my fingers and conjure food from the non-existent kitchen, your highness. She did not like that. I was sure she would start yelling at me for mocking her, but nope. You're a witch? Once more, I ask, what the hell? This just took a turn that made me long for a big stick to smack her upside the head with, because something was obviously just rolling around up there. Maybe if I smacked her hard enough, I could make her qualify to be shipped up to the loony bin or the funny farm. I start laughing in her face, mostly for my own thoughts. Her face starts to turn this shade of red that makes me laugh even harder, because it makes her look like the tomato from VeggieTales in a blonde wig. Oh boy. Why are you laughing? I'm the manager's wife and I can fire you! Still laughing, I'm bent over trying to breathe properly with tears streaming down my face from laughing so hard. That makes me start snorting from breathing in and out at the same time. I know, that's total broccoli salad. I wrote in my first post about my parents, right? My parents are the collective manager here. She has no idea. I eventually take a breath, clench my nails into my palms, and look this Karen straight in the eyes. You'd fire your own daughter, mom? I later told my mother about this, and she kind of found it insulting I'd say that. My mom is so much better looking, according to my father. <laughs> Karen? 
Aaron looks so dumbfounded by what I'd said that I have to actually turn my head towards the side completely so she's out of my line of vision so I don't start my laughing fit again. She huffs angrily and walks away. I turn on the lights and think that's the end of it. Nope. The morning shift typically has to clean up breakfast, and since I was helping my dad, who at the time was suffering from something unknown in his legs that made it painful to walk, I was the one that was cleaning up breakfast. It's from 6 to 9, and it was about 15 minutes from 10. I was just wiping down the counter now. Nothing was left from breakfast on the counter except for coffee for guests. I go into the back office and started washing dishes, which means that my dad has to keep his ear out for door chimes to go off, signaling that someone has come in. I'm in the middle of washing dishes when I hear yelling coming from the front. I'm greatly concerned for my dad and rush towards the office, grabbing my phone from the desk in case I had to call 911. I didn't. Lo and behold, Karen had arrived. She was yelling at my dad about how there was no breakfast set out, how he was a crappy employee, and how she knew the manager. Yeah, well, she did. <laughs> she was talking to him after all. My dad kept trying to explain breakfast hours were over and they were under no obligation to keep it open for her, even pointing to the sign right behind his head that stated the hours too. Karen was not having it. She saw me as soon as I walked in. And your employee cussed me out last night when I was was simply asking for directions. No, she didn't say cursed at me. I have to do the whole nails and palm trick to not start laughing at the memory because I would no doubt get in trouble for that. My dad turns to me and gives me this questioning look. I shake my head and shrug. Ma'am, she's not- I want to fire it right now! Well, as we say in the industry, the customer is unfortunately always right. My dad turns to me his face away from Karen, and gives me a grin before saying, You heard the lady. You're fired. I give him a returning grin. Okay, Dad, I'll go finish the dishes. Karen starts sputtering nonsense, but my dad turns to her and says, Is there anything else I can help you with? Karen demands to see the manager. Now, in the back office, a few steps away from the open door that separates the office from the front desk, I watch my dad stroll into the office in quite a bit of pain, which makes me mad, close the door, wait a minute before he walks back out and says, I'm the manager here and I'm asking you to leave the property. Karen screams, Well, then I'm not paying. Okay, guess what? You already paid at check-in with cash that requires a $50 deposit, so therefore you're not getting it back. My dad shrugs and I walk out from behind the desk a moment later to refill the coffee pot, where Karen has moved to get some. That's right, she didn't leave. Karen starts yelling at me. It's endless screaming and yelling. I swear. What the hell are you doing? You're fired. I smirk and tell her two things. One, I'm the manager's daughter and not actually an employee. Two, the coffee here is for paying guests. And since you clearly stated you're not paying, you can't have any. The coffee was out anyway, so she couldn't get any even if she tried. Karen, now understanding why I had called her mom the previous night, storms off. I don't see her again for the rest of the weekend. Which two? Wild Karen, zero. Edit number one! I wasn't paid as an employee, so no, I didn't technically work there. I only really helped out. And there isn't a kitchen, but in the back, there was a sink we used to wash the waffle batter, drip pan out, etc. So no, there was no kitchen. Yeah, a lot of hotels actually don't have kitchens. Um, I mean, they have a room which they refer to as a kitchen, but in reality, they probably don't have a stove or an oven or anything like that. And that is, like, if they have a continental breakfast as opposed to, like, a, a full-on, like, you know, breakfast breakfast. The eggs are, like, this weird cartoned mixture that's, uh, flavored with, like, has butter flavor and, like, it, it's weird stuff. <laughs> And so we just pour that into like this hot plate thing and that's how we cook the eggs. But um, I actually, I remember the, the last story we read from this, uh, from this user and uh, that's 
pretty funny. I like how she messes with the Karens. It's really fun. This story's called, I'm not paying for your games just because I made you lose time. English is not my first language, so I don't speak it very well. This was before the quarantine started. I was in a GameStop looking for some games, and I see Sekiro, and as a Soulsborne fan, I decided to pick it up. I had like $200 from money I received on my birthday. After me searching for like five minutes, a woman behind me does this sound that everyone who hears it knows what is about to to happen. Um, <clears throat> mister, I was asking if you could stop looking at the games and help me with something here. I immediately respond with, I don't work here, lady. Sorry, you could ask someone else for help. Then she says, if you don't work here, then why do you spend so much time inside the store? You have been here for like 40 minutes, so stop being a lazy frick and help me with this. I want to add that she was talking to me like she were my owner or something like that. So I tell her, first, I don't work here, and if your little fish brain can't understand that, you should go back to elementary school. And second, I'm not even wearing an acceptable uniform for the work. I'm in a t-shirt with Tachanka from Rainbow Six Siege helmet on it. So stop telling me what I should or not do. So she responded with a, Then you need to pay for this because you made me waste my time with you. Then not even a second after she says that, I respond, Okay, then you should pay for my game too because you made me waste my time too and I would accept paying for your game. She accepts and we go up to pay for the things, and because I was buying a new game, yes, this was from when Sekiro had just been released. It was more expensive than her game. So you still want to do this, or would you pay for your game and leave me alone? She pays for her game and leaves, and I, with an ear-to-ear -ear smile, pay and leave. I had a perfect night of suffering and frustration with my loved Sekiro. Yes, I have Sekiro, and it's a pretty good game. It didn't really suck me in just yet, but, um... I'm going along slowly. Got a release day. Still not done yet, but it's a, it's a good game. I recommend it if you like cool stuff. And it's pretty cool. So beautiful. Anyway, a uh, clever way of dealing with the Karen. Also, good video game taste. Soulsborne games, they're iconic. I wonder how many people actually play Demon Souls. Oh my god, who else is excited for the Demon Souls remaster or remake? I don't know which one it is. Uh, not for the PlayStation 5. That looks so cool. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.